Hello everyone. Have you ever tried to reverse engineer an Android application and then found only random letters for the classes, variables and method names? Or tried to put a um, man in the middle in an application? But then your proxy didn't reach any request. So that talk is for you. Let's talk about Android pretests. A brief introduction about me, uh, my name is Anisio and I work as an infosec analyst at Conviso and you can also find me on Twitter as ZeroXChips and I would like to start with a little story so long time ago I was starting to learn about mobile application security and trying to learn a new thing every day trying to make some mobile CTFs but then I decided to play outside I decided that was the time to look at real applications and that's a problem because think about a replication as a piece of code that a company delivers to the customer. So they have to make sure that this piece of code have a kind of hardening. So the life of anyone that tried to reverse engineer, make static and dynamic analysis on it, gonna be a little bit harder, you know? And that steps that we have to bypass before the real test is what we're gonna call here a uh, pretest. So let's do it. And not so long ago, I decided to make a challenge. So I will download a bunch of apps and see what kind of pretest that I can find. So basically, the goal is that. So just to be clear, the goal isn't to find vulnerabilities. The goal here is uh, try to set up the perfect lab. So set the best lab that I can set on each application. So uh, be sure that I can read each request and response proper and read the code of the application and have a, 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 a good environment for the test. So starting to get my hands dirty, I decided to download apps until the memory of my device runs out. And to analyze all of that application, I made a script so I can get information like the technology, and some other useful informations uh, just looking of the just looking to the output of my script uh, and don't have to open each uh, decompiled application and see by myself and basically that's a part of this script I made it in Python so here we have uh, a, a, met a method that is reading the manifest file that's the one of the most important uh, files in an Android application, and here we can have uh, we can see. Uh, um, I'm checking the technology. I'm checking for deep links and other strings on the Android manifest file, and the output of that script is something like this. So in this file, this output, I have uh, the package. I have the technology that is uh, really useful information for me uh, at first sight, and some other information like if the bug mode is available, uh, is enabled, sorry, uh, in network configuration, uh, deep links, and other stuffs. So basically, I, I, at first sight, I don't have to look at each application decompiled. I can choose uh, from a technology, sort the application, and then start to look of each uh, native application or each Flutter application and before I, I really see the application, I know what, what kind of application it is. So I decided to talk about 30 of the, that applications that I downloaded. Uh, many of them was involving uh, financial and e-commerce applications because uh, these uh, applications that, that uses money usually have some kind of hardening to, that you have to bypass before the test. So, and from those 30 applications, uh, 21 of them was native, so it uses Java or Kotlin. Uh, five of them was with Flutter. That really was a surprise for me because I was expecting React to become the second place. And then I saw, and it was Flutter. And, th and third, with three applications, we have here React. And at last we have Cordova with only one application. So start talking about uh, the, the real steps, the real pretest stuff. Uh, we have obfuscation at first. I have a, uh, I have here a graph that so that says that 21 applications 
that was major. Uh, 14 of them also have a, a kind of obfuscation, so they was really prepared. And just to make an example, here I have a piece of code that I wrote. So it's the, the, the real source code of that uh, method. And you can see that it's pretty readable, you know. The variables also have uh, a long end name and we can easily read this code. But if we pass this on ProGuard or any other tool to make an obfuscation, we're gonna see that it is really hard to read now. It's harder to read than it was before. So now we have uh, many variables that only have one letter and many methods that only have one letter too. And we have like here the b.a.a.a.c method, you know, the, the looking just for that it's kind of crazy. You, at first sight, you can make sure of, of what kind of this, what kind of, of this method is doing. So to help with that, we have uh, the JDX tool, which is a well-known tool for the compiled Android applications. And JDX also have a flag that call minus minus the obf. And with this flag, uh, we can uh, have a minimum uh, character for the variables, classes, and method names, and each time the 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 JDX see saw sorry see a variable method or class with less than uh, x letters that in this case is three, it will just uh, make sure that it has a, a larger name. So it's way 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 uh, easier to read now because we don't have like b dot a dot a now we have a c something dot m something is kind of more readable now unfortunately with obfuscation we don't have many many tools and and things to do the code is already compiled this way so we we can only make uh, some some like more easy to read and gatex usually helps with that with that so moving on to anti-hoot detection is a, a well-known uh, feature too. Here we have a uh, application that only opens and then it detects that that is running on the rooted device and then just closes. As you can see here, uh, this device is using Magis, is a, a, a real device. So talking about the thirty applications, uh, nine of them. Uh, also have anti-hood detection and from those nine two of them was uh, easily bypassable with uh, well-known uh, free scripts and other tools so uh, just to, to put everybody in the same page uh, I'm gonna talk about many common ways to, to uh, see uh, anti-hood detection on the wild and that first me method is uh, by seeing some files in the device. So here is the uh, is in the application, the code of the application. And we can see that this check for binary is checking for SU, Magins, busy box. So it is looking on the on the device and using this file.exist method to search for, for each one of these uh, binaries then logging and returning true, so true uh, return to for the application that these, uh, these device have root uh, permission. So to bypass it, uh, we have really good free scripts on the wild. So this is one of them, uh, well known. So here we have a, a list of the, the binaries. You can also add another if you want. And we have an implementation of the access function. So it will detect when the application try to uh, reach any of those binaries. And if uh, the application tries, it will just uh, console log uh, and then return false. So this particular uh, technique is bypassed by this way. It's a, a really good bypass. And another technique that we can see with anti-hood is checking for commands. So the application will try uh, to execute some command in the device. 
and it will do this uh, with this method, the runtime get runtime dot exec, uh, and then uh, what it is trying to exec execute. So here you execute su and real here the which su uh, su sorry. And the same uh, free script that we saw earlier also helps with that technique. So if we can see here, it over uh, the script overload many runtime exec methods and trying to to look. Uh, which command the application is trying to run, and if it detects the su command, uh, it will just change for uh, 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 a command that will will not execute like this giant string, and then the application will fail to detect that it is running on the root device because the command will fail and it will think that the the command uh, don't exist in the device. So another technique that is that is well known uh, is trying to look at the package on the device, the, the other applications that the device have installed. So uh, is many similar uh, is uh, similar that with the others that we saw. So here we have a list of with the uh, some uh, package names and the application is trying to uh, see using the package manager if the, the device uh, have one of that uh, packages. And the same free script that we are seeing also have an implementation for that, that bypass. Uh, we also have a list of the packages and then it overload this uh, get package info method and try to see if the application is trying to reach a package that is on the list and if it is just uh, change the p name here and then call the function normals but the package is gonna gonna see or gonna be this set dot package so the command will fail also and that's a, a really good implementation for that kind of bypass so a not so common uh, a technique that we can use to bypass uh, Android detect uh, anti root detection is many applications will detect that the application is running on the hooded device and then closes. So if we can prevent the application from close, like hooking the system doc ex dot exit method, maybe the application will run proper. But many times when the application calls the system doc dot exit method, it will also calls uh, throw throw a new error. So if you look closer, these uh, methods don't have any try catch to handle this error. So even when we uh, prevent the application from for the system exit, the error, error will be thrown, and then the application will close normally. But if we look at this second example right here we can see that the only thing that is changing is detecting that is valid app and then calling that method. I try to uh, hook this method, but I fail many times. Then I decided to, maybe I can just um, f stop the application here with the system exit and then calling uh, that method with, with by hand, by using another tool. And that's what I try to make. Like, we're gonna try to uh, put a try catch to handle this error and then call this method. So using a free script for it, as I, sa as I said, uh, here we have a pr the prevent execute, uh, exit for the, the application. So we are just hooking the exit call. And here we have uh, uh, to trying to reach the class and the run implementation, but we can also reach the java.lang.thread class in that same um, method, and it, it will run proper um, anytime. So we are just putting the try catch here, and when the error uh, will be thrown on the application, 
here it will just be handled by this cache. So to continue the flux of the application, we can use objection. So looking for heap instances of the of some class in the objection, we can find uh, the, the hash code in the class and we can also use that hash code to call a method from that class. So it's basically what we are doing here, just searching on the heap and then executed, execu executing sorry, uh, a method from that class. So I have a video here. Okay. So here we, ha we have the objection and here we, ha we have Frida and here I have the Frida script. As you can see here, I'm using Java lang thread. So running objection, then running Frida. The application starts to run. And now the prevent exit was called, the exception was sketched. And now I'm looking at the heap with objection. I found the class that I'm looking. And I will just call the method that I need from that class. Okay, oh, and as you can see here, with, even with the blur, the application starts to run proper and the root implementation was properly bypassed. After I, I uh, resolved it with that way, I saw that it, the application have another method that we can also use Frida to bypass this root detection, but I found uh, that this implementation was quite funny <laughs> to, to make and I decided to talk about it anyway. So moving on. Okay, now let's talk about SSL pinning. So from the 30 applications, 30 of them had some SSL pin implementation. And from those 30, 27 of them was easily bypassable. So um, well-known free descripts uh, can also bypass these kind of SSL pinning. And that's because uh, many applications usually uses the OK HTTP3 uh, for handle this uh, certificate pinning uh, function. So, and as you can see here on the OK HTTP3, we have a class called certificate pinning, uh, pinner, sorry. And that class have a method called check. And that method is the method that checks, as the name says, is the uh, certificate that is in the communication is the right one. And what many free descripts do, as uh, that that we are seeing here, we can also find on Frida code share, is uh, bypass the OK HTTP free and many implementation of them. So here we have uh, implementation that uh, doesn't return anything. Here we have a uh, return true, also a return true here. So by looking at many implementations of OKHTTP3 okay, and by passing the check method, we can easily bypass the SSL pinning on many applications. Even in non-native applications, uh, I, I faced many Flutter applications that uses OKHTTP3 okay, also. So with this check, uh, with this uh, implementation, we can bypass these SSL pinning. But talking more about Flutter SSL pinning, uh, it can be harder sometimes, and that post helps a lot with that. So um, talking more about Flutter SSL pinning, uh, Flutter is made with Dart, and Dart have this uh, library that's HTTP client, and this library also have a frying proxy method. And that method uh, makes sure that the application uh, see, uh, sees if the device have a proxy. So if you use the HTTP client without this find proxy uh, method call, the application will ignore the proxies, even the proxies set on the device, uh, the, the, the network. 
so it will communicate directly with the server. So that's the first step that we have to bypass to to proper implement uh, bypass the SSL pinning with in Flutter applications. So we need to make the application not aware of the proxy. So to make that, we can use uh, prox uh, proxy droid. So it's an application that you can install on a real device. It will uh, make a, a in app interface and and uh, intercept the request for you, any request from the device. And we can also use IP tables uh, by hand, but just putting uh, this out output and it will uh, uh, redirect to the our proxy but we have to remember to put the perp uh, in this invisible proxy uh, support so this uh, this implementation can proper work and if you are using a emulator device uh, the emulator will have uh, outside the device a menu when where you can set the proxy here we have the uh, Android uh, virtual device, the uh, AVD emulator. So here outside the device, we have this menu that you can manually set the proxy and it will work just as proxy droid and just as IP tables and it will work uh, really nice. So after we bypass, we implement that uh, aware for the application that we have a proxy uh, we can also we have to also uh, resolve another stuff that is as we can see here in the issue from Dart, uh, the Windows and also the other versions like the Android and, and other uh, Flutter technologies use, uses a, a compiled uh, root certificates so it will ignore the, the certificates in the device uh, the application have his own certificate that it is looking so we have to bypass this by hand and uh, Dart and, and Flutter are also open source and looking at this uh, library that is boring SSL is what Dart uses to handle all this uh, SSL stuff. We have this file that is SSL x09 that have this method that uh, we can proper hook with reader that method and change the output and we will bypass the SSL pinning is a really good uh, way to do that that as you can see on the text that I uh, said before and using Ghidra you can use any other uh, reverse engineer tool but using Ghidra uh, we can see the the calls uh, the, the, the strings uh, from that file and looking at the XFs we can see the, some uh, classes and uh, search for that specific class that I saw that I showed earlier and get some bytes and with that bytes we can put it on a free script so right here we have the the SSL pinning uh, bypass and here we have a method just to uh, search the address and then call the the proper method as you can see here if you are using a uh, ARM device, uh, a real device, you have to put this add, this add, sorry. And if you, you use an uh, emulator device like with x86, we did, don't need it. But here you put the bytes that you get from Ghidra. And then the, this uh, implementation will work proper, as you can see here on this video. So here we have an application that uses Flutter and this, uh, this implementation. So I'm, I'm just uh, putting login information and trying to see uh, the request on my burp that is setting right now. So I'm just writing. And the application runs normal, nothing on burp, nothing on, on dashboard, nothing, nothing. I will just put the proxy droid now I have to put the host 
give the SU permission to the host and then the port and then start the proxy droid. So now that I started the proxy droid, as you can see, if I try to make a request for, from the application, the dashboard menu on the burp will notify an, uh, another error. The remote will terminate the handshake. That's the error that we are trying to, uh, to have. So now the application is reaching the burp. And now using Ghidra, I will search for, the, for any uh, string with the name of the uh, file that we saw earlier that's x0509 uh, and looking in the strings we have these x halves now I will try to search the correct uh, function that we saw so it's not that Try more one more time, and it's that function. As you can see here, like two ints and one undefined. If it is x86, will be two longs and one undefined. And now you get the first bytes of that function. Just to have a a, a, a unique bytes, and then I will put this on three the script here, as we saw earlier also have here the add to the address now I will run the free the script and the application will be started again I found the address now I will try to make a request we will put it on burp ok make a request And as you can see here, now we have one request and also have a, a request in intercept. So as you can see, the SSL pinning from Flutter was a proper bypass. Oh, Talking about body encoding now. So from those three applications, four of them had body encoding. That was also a surprise for me. I was expecting less, to be honest. So uh, here we have an example. Like uh, we can that that response is not human readable at first sight. It, it is kind of encrypted or something so sometimes you can use uh, well-known free scripts for that too uh, that script for from secure lab f secure labs that traces the cipher uh, classes in the java crypto uh, will will many times work with that problem as we can see here so i have a uh, response that's not uh, human readable too but I am using that free script for intercept the the uh, Java crypto calls Java crypto cipher calls and it, it's returning that on the other string and that string is in base 64 and now I can use that base 64 string to see the real response for the server so it will it won't work any time. It will not work any time. But uh, many cases you can resolve just with that uh, Java crypto Java X, uh, X crypto call, uh, method. Sorry, class. And my last words. So did I make in all the applications? Uh, the short answer is no. I'm I'm still have nightmares about some of them, but that's kind of my new CTF. You know, I'm keeping track 
for each application. And when I am trying to study about more anti-hoot methods and more advanced stuff, I just uh, reach any of these applications that I'm keeping track and study more about it. Uh, it's a really interesting field. Uh, many applications have uh, many form, many different forms to implement that specific uh, feature. You know, is very interesting. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for uh, the mobile hacking space for the opportunity. Thanks for my team back in Confucius for all the help. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter, as I said earlier, as 0xchips. And that's all. Thanks a lot.